What's up guys, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and today I've got a really good video for you if you edit video in any capacity on an NVIDIA powered PC. So basically in the past I've covered Synergy's Daniel 2, Vocoder and the new Premiere Pro update that adds GPU powered rendering to Premiere Pro, those other two were plugins that previously added that. But today I've got something that is actually mind blowing, especially if you're running PCs or laptops that aren't anywhere near as expensive as a high end workstation. And even if you do have a high end workstation, this will still help you tremendously. Now, currently I've got a ton of processes open on my computer, and this is a good thing. If I have a look at performance, almost half my RAM is used. There's a lot of activity going on everywhere. So this puts my very good PC in a good spot to go ahead and test this. Now, of course, I'm recording, so the difference may be slightly different for you. But basically, in this video, I'm going to be covering the new release from Synergy Daniel 2. And this is their new plugin, Turbo Cut, a plugin for Premiere Pro that adds H.264 and HEVC hardware accelerated video editing support for Adobe CC 2020. And I've tried it with the beta. It seems to make a difference there as well. Not too sure but I use the beta for basically everything. Anyways, what exactly does this mean? Well, making editing of H.264 and HEVC possible on laptops and entry-level machines, as long as an NVIDIA GPU is installed, requires a Windows 10, Adobe CC 2020, and an NVIDIA Maxwell or Turing series GPU, i.e. if you have a 10 series, 1080, 1050, etc. And anywhere above that, you're probably more than safe enough. As for whether it works with the 9 series or anything earlier than that, I'm not too sure. You'll have to go ahead and check if you've got a Turing or Maxwell graphics card. But with all of that aside, what exactly does this do? Well, it gives you that hardware accelerated editing playback performance that you may find lacking from Premiere Pro currently. What I'm going to do is head across to this link in the description down below and click free download. That'll take me across to this page over here where I can go ahead and enter some details and I'll get an email from them in a moment. Know that just because you're filling in these details, this is completely free, free download. And if we have a look at this other page over here, which is Daniel 2's homepage, and we click free download, you'll see over here, it's completely free. And you can see the software has a countdown timer of 45 days, which will then refresh it with the included license manager. And the reason they give is because this is the way that they force everyone to keep the software up to date and probably also so they can tell how many people are actually actively using it. But either way, these are completely free. Obviously, they can change it at any time, but they are completely free as far as I know. So either clicking the download button here or clicking it on this page, you'll get to this page over here. You'll fill in your details and you'll receive an email with a key and a download link. Now, of course, I won't be showing that here, but you will be receiving it shortly. I'll go ahead and put a screenshot on the screen now. Either way, is clicking the version for Windows zip file or Mac OS package installer. It'll take us to a new link where we'll download a 60 something megabyte zip file. Now, of course, I haven't tried the Mac version, probably because I don't have a Mac. Anyways, once it's done, I'll click on it to open it and we'll have an exe inside of the zip. Now, it's probably a good idea to extract this but simply double clicking it and running it seems to work fine anyways. Obviously yours won't look like this because you won't have it installed. You'll just get the option to install it. Once you click it, you'll see this over here. It won't say repair. It'll say install or skip. Simply make sure that you have install selected for both Synergy License Manager and TurboCut for Adobe CC. You need both of these installed for it to work. Then I'll click next, hit yes when prompted for admin, and then it'll go ahead and install itself. Then once it's done, I'll hit close, and we'll go ahead and open up the Synergy License Manager, either from the icon on our desktop, or you can press start and look for it there. Then once it's opened, you'll get a list of serial numbers if you have any other Daniel 2 or Synergy software installed. But of course, if you don't see anything here, all you need to do is click add license in the bottom right and enter the serial key that you got in your email. Then you'll get a pop-up saying what you have, click I understand, install license, and it'll say it's been successfully added. Great, so now it's activated, it's completely free, so this will just automatically refresh in 45 days or whatever it is. The plugin is now working and installed. All we need to do is find the second icon on our desktop, Turbo Cut for Adobe CC powered by Daniel 2. Double click on it, click yes when prompted for admin, and we'll get this config page over here. Now inside of here, we have a couple of options, Daniel 2 import, I'll leave this checked as GPU. Then we have this main option over here, AVC HEVC import. Make sure that GPU acceleration here is checked if you want this plugin to actually work. What I'm gonna do is check and uncheck this as we go. Then we have logger over here, which I'm not gonna use currently. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this off and give you a demonstration of what it's like to edit on my PC in its current state, recording with tons of applications open. If I were to hit okay, the plugin is now disabled and moving across task manager, I'll keep this somewhere on the side. And as you can see, I'm on my main GPU over here. I've got a second one, but that won't really be utilized here. And up here is my CPU. So I'll go ahead and open up Premiere Pro 2020 Beta, though this plugin is designed to work with 2020. Opening up yesterday's video project, I'll put this somewhere on the side. You can see it's a GTA 5 video. So if I go ahead and skip through it, hit play, you'll see that it's black for quite some time. Scrubbing through it is really stuttery and difficult, and it takes a couple of seconds to start actually playing after I hit spacebar. So what I'm gonna do is click across over here, press space as soon as I do and start counting. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. It takes some time to play, especially when you're jumping between actual individual video clips. And I've got these on an SSD, an NVMe one, so there is absolutely no reason that they should be taking this long to show up on my screen, other than the fact that they are recorded at 60 megabits per second. They are 2K video files, and you can see it leaves a massive hit on my CPU, and looking at my GPU through all of that, there's only a little bit of 3D action here from it actually being piped to my screen, other than that, there's basically nothing. Closing out of Premiere, you can see I'm left with just this over here. This is just from recording, a little spike, but again, we can ignore that. Opening up the config once again, this time I'll go ahead and check GPU acceleration and hit OK. Now we've enabled the plugin, I'll open up Premiere once again. Opening up the same project without saving or changing anything, move this across to the side. You can see I'll scrub through the timeline. Obviously, it'll take a bit for the video to actually start rendering. But at least to my eyes, it's a lot smoother scrolling through this and even over this red part over here with a video transform in it, just to zoom into 150%, you can see that it's actually quite a bit better. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click over here, press spacebar, and we'll do the same test. One, two, one, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, it's actually a lot better. Though, of course, I am recording and my PC is quite high-end-ish, to say the least, in its current state. And for some reason, you're not really seeing as much of a spike here as you probably would when I'm actually not recording. I don't know if this has something to do with my NVENC cores or a limit or something like that put on my system by NVIDIA or just the software itself. And of course, it isn't designed for the beta version of Premiere Pro, but I'm using it anyways. And of course, on top of that, it's not necessarily made for already high-end computers. It's gonna help a low-end computers a lot more than it will mine. And of course, with all of those factors, there are other programs, other limitations, etc., etc. Opening the project in a fresh copy of Adobe 2020, I'll head back to this one over here. You can see it looks a little bit different. Currently, Turbo Cut is enabled. I'll go ahead and skip through it as such. You can see the performance, dragging it as well. And if I hit play, I'll do the same test as earlier. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, one, two. And there's an error, though I think this has more to do with my video file. I doubt this is from the project. Yeah, I'd say it's from the actual video file. Anyways, ignoring that, that is the performance with the plugin installed and set up. It's pretty good, though of course it is a bit laggy over these sections here with a zoom in effect. Other than that, it's working really well. What I'm gonna do is close out of Premiere Pro 2020 and go ahead and disable the plugin. Having a quick look at the task manager though, which I completely forgot about, you can see video decode spiked every time I started playing it and the CPU has sort of the opposite effect where the CPU cores aren't being eaten anywhere near as much as my GPU's video decode. Anyway, turning this off, I'll make sure to leave this on my screen now. Opening up Premiere Pro 2020 once again, I'll open up the same project, head back to the same part of it, And we've done the same test through it. So there's a little bit of a difference. Over here, it did take quite some time for it to start playing. 
As far as I can tell, it does make some difference at least. Now, of course, this will be way more noticeable for you on a much slower computer where you're really struggling with CPU power and the GPU comes in clutch, saving you a lot of time and effort and giving you a lot more performance. What you're seeing in this video isn't exactly the best example. In fact, for a good example, I'd recommend you head across to Daniel 2's homepage, which will be linked down below as well. And when you get here, scroll down a little bit to the sneak preview of the accelerated editing and go ahead and skip through this video over here. He covers a bunch of different stuff on it, showing you frame times, etc. And he talks about the performance, etc. I'd highly recommend you have a look at that. And of course, give the plugin a look as well, because it's completely free. It's a small download, and if it makes a big difference for you, then great. If it doesn't, you can go ahead and remove it at any time. This video is more of just a PSA that you should go ahead and try this if you haven't already. It's given me quite a performance boost, probably because I'm recording and I have everything open. It's not giving me quite the exact same results as it did earlier, but for me, it did make quite a noticeable difference. But anyways, that's about it for this video. I highly recommend you go ahead and check it out. Links down below. My name is Techno, here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.